Now I'd like to look at the energy stores and transfers for a really simple scenario. I'm just going to have a ball and I drop it and then it bounces. Now for something like this we've got to think about a few things so we can actually think about the stores and transfers that actually take place. And the first thing we need to do is we need to think about our start point and the end point. Because once you've got these sorted you can then start to think about what the stores are at this time. Now the start point could be maybe the energy stored in me, it could be when I'm moving the ball up, but I'm going to say for this one the start point is the instant that I let the ball go. What about the end point? I mean it could be before it hits the table as it's bouncing back up, or maybe after it completely comes to rest after bouncing a few times. For this scenario here I'm just going to say that the end point is just before the ball hits the table. That's, you know, before it's made contact but it's travelling really quickly. So now we've got our start and end point sorted out, we can start to maybe think about what's actually happening. Well, the process is really that something here, uh, there's a force acting on it, uh, there's a resultant force due to its weight as soon as I let go, and that uh, force causes this mass to then accelerate, and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. So that's just, a, I guess, a bit of the physics and actually what's happening. That's not even thinking about energy, that's just a description of what's happening. So now let's think about the stores. Now the store at the start, because I've defined my start point as when the ball is at the highest point, I don't need to consider the chemical energy in me that got it there, the fact I had to move it up so there's some kinetic energy. If it's at a certain height above the table and it's still, then it's got energy stored in the gravitational potential energy store. Now at the very end, just before it hits the table, it's not raised off the table so it's got no gravitational potential energy left. Instead it's travelling as quick as it can and therefore all of its energy is going to be stored in the kinetic store. And we're going to assume that there's no energy losses to the surroundings. So it had gravitational potential and now it's got kinetic. So what about the transfer process? How does it get from one store to the other? Well we can then think about um, it's not heating, uh, there's nothing electrical and there's no radiation. I guess that means it's going to be something mechanical. Now remember that mechanical transfer is when there's a force acting over distance and here the force is going to be the weight of the ball and it's acting over a certain distance. So here there's a transfer in the form of this mechanical work. Now to maybe do this as a diagram you might think about putting your stores in boxes so we've got maybe the store at the start, the store at the end and to show there's a transfer we might do that with a bit of an arrow. So we can maybe just have our gravitational in a box, our kinetic in a box and then we have an arrow and by the side of that we can then maybe label this mechanical. And then what you can then do is take this diagram and maybe put it into your own words to describe what's happening. Now that's all there is to it really. When it comes to looking at energy transfer processes, think about the start and end point, think about the stores at each point and also then think about the transfers that take place so you get energy from one store to another. And in the following examples I show some of the kind of the main things that you might get asked about in exam kind of situations.